Hey guys, welcome back. I wanted to make a short little video today showing how I put this paracord loop on this brass striker that I got from County Com. Now you might have seen this striker in a previous video when I was making fire in Yellowstone National Park during the winter. It was the first time that I had actually used that striker outdoors. When you're experimenting with it inside, um, it's not uh, not too bad and I was very attracted by the small size but I realized that I wanted a way that I wouldn't lose it and with this loop I will be able to string it through a piece of molly webbing on a zipper pull and with a lark's head I can put this on a longer piece of paracord and put it around my neck and tuck it into my shirt safely when I want to use it. This will be a small loop that won't be uh, too uh, much cord that's in the way. It will give me a little better handle and it will give me a way of preventing this being lost. I was almost done putting this on and I realized that this would be the gist of a good follow-up video. So I'm going to take this apart and we'll start again from scratch and I'll show you how I put this paracord loop on this brass striker that I got from County Com. Okay, here are the items that you'll need a piece of 3 8 heat shrink tubing, the brass striker from County Com, about two feet of type 1 paracord, you can also use any type rated nylon such as Mason's line that you can get at a local hardware store or building supply, and this is about eight or nine inches of 550 cord that is stripped of its inner core. So the process is going to be to put the paracord along the shaft of the striker and I'll be lining it up with the side flats of this top part and that'll allow me access to the small brass screw in the end where I can replace the flint as needed. On top of that, we will do a whipping wrap with the Type 1 paracord, and then to finish it off, we'll slide a piece of heat shrink tubing on, and we're good to go. Let's quickly go over how the whipping part works. This is the configuration for the paracord and the striker. On top of that, I'm going to take another piece of paracord, Type 1, make a small loop at one end, and I'll place that on top. I'll then start wrapping backwards and the free end will go through this loop and then by pulling both ends will make a nice tight wrap on the shaft. There's a quick little trick to make it easier. One thing that you might potentially have trouble with is keeping the ends of the paracord even while trying to hold on to this small striker. So you can take a rubber band and secure it with multiple wraps of the rubber band. Or I have a little extra piece of this stretch coband, which will work very nice as well. So I'm going to just leave a little extra hanging off the end and not to worry about that because you will um, pull and adjust everything at the very end. So just stretch and wrap that coband right around there. Now I don't need to worry about that and I can focus on the whipping knot. So again we're going to take about perhaps eight inches, make a loop, lay that loop right along the shaft and with the end opposite the loop is where we're going to start our wrap. So I'm going to just start a nice tight wrap and just keep everything nice and even. At this point I can start hanging on with this end, wrapping towards the very end of the striker and I'm going to stop there and what I'm looking for is a little space at the end 
so that I can make some final adjustments. We're going to pull the loop up. See if I can get it in focus there. Okay, so I've got the loop up. And what I'm going to do now is take the end and thread it through that loop. Set it down in the base of the loop. And what you'll notice now is if I pull this other free end, that loop will start to tighten up, and that's what holds the wrap in place. In fact, when I pull it tight at the very end, it'll pull that small loop all the way about halfway in, It'd be nice and secure, and then we'll trim the ends off, and then we'll put on the heat shrink tubing. Remove that coband, you'll see how useful securing that is. And now we've got these free tails. So what I'm going to do is get the shaft in the center of the wrap. And now I can pull. And you'll notice that the end of the paracord where I have uh, melted it, it now forms a little stop up against the end of the paracord wrap. And that one actually is not as good of a melt. So what we're going to do is tune that up. So we'll take a lighter. Get it melted. Quick little. And we're good. So now I'm going to pull that tight. The free ends will keep that from sliding free. Now what I'm going to do is pull that loop. See if I can get it underneath by pulling tight. There, you see it go underneath. That loop now is in the middle. Now I'm going to apply real firm pull to both sides, and that tightens that loop up quite nicely. We'll do a final adjustment of these ends. And now we can cut the Type 1 paracord free. Now you can melt the ends in there, but uh, to be honest, it's a little hard without damaging anything. So I'm going to leave it alone. And there we're, we're pretty much done. And you can see this gives me access to the end, so I can change out the flint. And now I've got a nice little toggle, so I won't lose this tool. And to finish it off, we're going to put a little dressing of heat shrink tubing right on top there. So I'm going to measure that heat shrink tubing. And I'm going to go basically from the end of that brass flat to the end of that brass flat. And we will trim it off. Slide that on over the loop. get it adjusted, make sure that I like that length, and I think that'll work very nicely. The next step is to shrink down that tubing. Now one can certainly use a lighter, but I prefer to do a lot of the heat shrink tubing with gear like this with my heat gun. And there you have it. That's a nice little modification to the County Com brass striker. All right, we're going to actually do this without the inner core. So we'll get rid of those strands. And now basically we're just going to make a loop. And one quick little knot to do that is a little partial clove hitch at one end, or an overhand knot, just like that. So this one now runs freely through there. I'll pull that tight, 
Okay, trim that off. And we'll just key seal that. Now we do the same thing on the other end. Just an overhand knot. Pull it tight, trim the end, seal that end, and now all you do is you pull these two tight and you've got a nice low profile knot and we've made a necklace essentially. Now the way you use this with this loop is you just put the two loops together, run the longer loop over the device, in this case the brass striker, just like that. Now you can hang this around your neck, tuck that in your shirt, and it's secured. Tip for securing paracord on your spools, put a rubber band around the spool, pick it up, Put your finger in and just twist around and run your spare end of the cord through and that will keep it in place. Another quick little tip, you can do the same thing with just the next wrap on the spool is to pick it up, put a twist in it just like that, run the cord through pull it tight and it's secured on your spool. That is the modification to the Countycom brass striker. Some future videos coming up. This is a nice little piece of gear, do it yourself, has a lot of uses. And we'll also go over making tether cords or dummy cords for gear. Now this is not a flashlight, it's actually a video camera and I have this dummy cord on there so that it can be tethered to something secure so it doesn't fall off and get damaged during certain applications.